Well, I'm Professor Graham McGregor, and I work at the Wolfson Institute of Preventive Medicine, and I'm chairman of our action group on salt, uh, CASH. Now, we've been reducing salt in the UK since 2003, but the story goes back a bit longer than that, because it was in 1996 that we got together all the experts on salt and blood pressure in the UK and formed an action group to try and get the government to agree to reduce salt intake in the UK. We were very successful in this and they asked the Food Standards Agency to take on the uh, policy of salt reduction. Now, the way we did this in conjunction with the Food Standards Agency was what we call incremental reformulation. That is setting targets for each food group that the food industry has to achieve in four years time and then after two years reviewing how they're getting on and then resetting the targets for another two years ahead and again bringing them down so that this is slowly slowly getting salt intake down in the UK and we've been going now for over 11 years but the study is over the last eight years and you'll see that salt in food products has been reduced from around 25 to 40 percent. Now we've recently looked at this uh, and looked at the effects on blood pressure, salt intake and stroke and my colleague Dr. Fung Hei, who's lead author on the study, is going to give, uh, uh, give us a clear explanation of the results of this study. Hello, my name is Fung Hei. I would like to present our paper on salt, blood pressure and mortality from stroke and ischemic heart disease. The UK initiated a nationwide salt reduction program in 2003. The program has been very successful and led to a 15% reduction in the average salt intake of the whole population by 2011. The aim of our study was to determine the relationship between the reduction in salt intake and the changes in blood pressure and mortality from stroke and ischemic heart disease in England from 2003 to 2011. We analyzed the data from a series of health surveys. Salt intake was calculated from 24-hour urinary sodium excretion from the National Diet and Nutrition Survey. The survey was carried out in a random sample of the adult population and the 24 urine collections were verified using PABA recovery methods to ensure the accuracy of the collection. Blood pressure was taken from the health survey for England, which was carried out in a separate random sample of the adult population. Since 2003, blood pressure has been measured using the same validated electronic blood pressure monitor using a standardized protocol. This figure shows the main results. In 2003, the average salt intake was 9.5 grams a day. At, At that time, the Food, the food Standard Agency, Agency and the CASH developed, developed a salt reduction program. In the following years, CASH and the FSE have been working with the food industry by gradually reducing the amount of salt added to food. Along with this, there has been a continuous media campaign to increase the awareness of the harmful effect of salt on health and also to put pressure on the food industry. As a result of this program, salt intake has fallen. By 2011, salt intake was reduced to 8.1 grams a day. Therefore, from 2003 to 2011, there was a reduction of 15% in the average salt intake of the population. In parallel to the reduction in salt intake, there has been a significant reduction in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic was reduced by three millimeter of mercury and diastolic was reduced by almost one and a half millimeter of mercury. During this period, there was also a significant reduction in stroke mortality by 42% and ischemic heart disease mortality by 40%. It is possible that these reductions in blood pressure and mortality were attributable to various factors such as the changes in diet, lifestyles, 
and the improvement in the treatment of blood pressure, cholesterol, and cardiovascular disease. Our further analysis clearly suggested that the reduction in salt intake plays an important role, particularly in the reductions in blood pressure. To exclude any potential confounding effects of treatment, we performed a separate analysis by including only individuals who were not on any blood pressure treatment or any other medication that might affect blood pressure. Our analysis showed that from 2003 to 2011, there was a fall in blood pressure of 2.7 over 1.1 millimeter of mercury after adjusting for almost all factors known to be associated with blood pressure, except the salt intake. The factors that we have adjusted for included age, gender, ethnic group, education level, household income, alcohol consumption, fruit and vegetable intake, and body mass index. Salt intake is a major determinant of the population blood pressure. It was not included in our analysis because it was not measured in the same participants whose blood pressure was recorded. However, the fact that the average salt intake in the random sample of the whole population fell by 15% during this period would suggest that the reductions in blood pressure would be largely attributable to this reduction in salt intake. It is well established that the risk of blood pressure throughout its range is a major cause of cardiovascular disease. From the meta-analysis of blood pressure treatment trials, we estimated that a 2.7 mm mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure that occurred with the salt reduction would be predicted to reduce stroke by approximately 11% and ischemic heart disease by 6%. These results are supported by the evidence from both prospective cohort studies and outcome trials. In conclusion, our study showed that the reduction in salt intake is likely to be an important contributor to the reductions in blood pressure in England from 2003 to 2011. As a result, it would have substantially contributed to the reduction in stroke mortality and ischemic heart disease mortality. Despite the significant progress being made on salt reduction, the average salt intake in England is still very high. In 2011, it was 8.1 grams a day, which is about 35% higher than the recommended level of 6 grams a day. About 70% of adult population had a salt intake above the recommended level. Therefore, continuing and much greater efforts are needed to achieve further reductions in salt intake and to prevent the maximum number of stroke and ischemic heart disease death. Well, as you can see, we have been successful in reducing salt intake, albeit by a limited amount, but this has had a big effect on population blood pressure and certainly has reduced the number of people dying and suffering from strokes and heart attacks. Uh, but we still have a long way to go, and we're continuing with the policy, and salt reduction will continue in the UK. Nevertheless, from the predictions we can make from the fall of blood pressure, this will have resulted in uh, preventing 18,000 stroke and heart attack events per year in the UK, 9,000 of which are fatal. So you can see the big reductions that we get with quite small reductions in salt intake. Now NICE has also ca ca calculated how cost effective is the salt reduction program in the UK and they reckon that, that we were spending around £5 million a year on the cost of the salt reduction and it was resulting in healthcare saving costs of £1.5 billion. There's no other such cost effective public health program. Now, the results of our study have big implications outside the UK because other countries can do the same. And with our World Action on Salt and Health, WASH, we're spreading out this message. 
But the message I'd like to give you today is that those international companies that are exactly the same in the UK as elsewhere have successfully and voluntarily reduced the amount of salt in their products by 25 to 40 percent. Such companies as Unilever, Nestle, uh, Kraft, Kellogg's, Pepsi Cola, etc. Now if they can do it in the UK, they can do it in the rest of the world and indeed they need to do so. So I hope that the results of our study will encourage you to get on with salt reduction elsewhere in the world. It's immensely beneficial and immensely cost effective. Thank you.